morning my friends let's have some fun with this video that looks like it might be a little bit fun here while i'm going to make some videos on the gospel of philip in the meantime let's do this one that's atheist mit prof professor converts to christianity after discovering this i would be interested in something like this because the way that our egos react in the duality that we live in most people just believe in jesus christ so what what good would a talk what good would a video be for them they they just want more people on their team they just want more people on their side and that's kind of what's interesting to me is like what good is a is a talk like this heart of science you have to have a belief that there's truth, that there's something greater to be discovered. So let me ask that old question. Uh, what, what do you think this thing is? See, already it's kind of amazing to me. We're just in the intro. But just the fact that she said truth and a search for truth, you will arrive at Jesus Christ, no matter the biggest atheist that you are. If you're looking for truth, you that's where you will arrive there's no other place we thought that we were going to invent this science thing and that was going to lead us to the truth it's all built off of these biblical things science itself only exists because we need to survive but there's a bigger question is we thought science was going to uncover god but it's only jesus christ so when she said truth i thought Oh, there's somebody different right there. There's somebody. She didn't say facts. She didn't say check those Twitter facts. Well, it's the life on Earth. And as I learned about that, I uh, changed my viewpoint gradually from an atheist to an agnostic to a theist to somebody who... So she changed from atheist, which is somebody that looks at the Old Testament and they go, all that is hypocritical. And then they would be right. And then she changed from atheist to agnostic, which means that she demands that somebody proves it to her. Then she had it proven to herself somehow. That's what we're going to find out. Then she became a Christian once the perfect man, Jesus Christ, was proven to be the perfect man through her own investigation. She must have figured out all human beings are hypocrites. All human beings look at each other to be perfect when we shouldn't. Every single human being is flawed. If we're looking for somebody to be perfect, we will arrive at Jesus Christ. If we're looking for the actual truth, we will arrive at Jesus Christ. You point gradually from an atheist to an agnostic. The, the, this, is what, this is what converted me I mean, I've been the I've been in the mysteries my whole life. I just didn't know that that's what I was watching on my MTV music videos and the movies that I was watching. And the internet came out and all the conspiracy stuff. And I remember Jesus is Horus. And then I thought that that was somehow challenging my belief in Jesus Christ. Then I found out, wait a minute, I'm just believing in Jesus Christ without any knowing, without any authenticity, without knowing that Jesus Christ is provably the perfect man through his teachings itself. Then I arrived at being a Christian. Yes, to somebody who actually believed that the historical Jesus and the New Testaments What's written about him is true. Rosalind Picard is an extremely well-educated and accomplished woman. She's a now, scholar. Now, this is what I would be wanting to watch a video like this for. While this guy's talking, does anybody care about these truths? Does anybody care about becoming a friend of Jesus Christ? Or does everybody just believe in Jesus Christ and they're afraid of their belief being challenged? So they just want more people on their team, on, on their team, believe in Jesus Christ. 
Rosalind Picard is an extremely well-educated and accomplished woman. She's a scholar, an inventor, a professor of science at MIT. And in this video, she's going to share her journey to God. And it includes two pieces. The first, I would say, is by way of subtraction. The second is by way of addition. With that being said, let's dive into the first clip here. It's Rosalind Picard with Lex Friedman. He said scientists too often assume that nothing exists beyond what can be uh, currently measured. Uh, so yeah, materialism. Sense, materialism. And scientism, yeah. So in some sense, this assumption enabled... Did she figure out that she just said materialism? Did she realize that science is only the investigation of materialism void of all consciousness? Then science says that's where we draw the line because now we've crossed the line into religion if we talk about consciousness the near-term scientific I can I can't believe the last video that I made like this which was probably a couple months ago some 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 random person that we've never seen at our mystery school commented and said that's not real science d it, it's the investigation of consciousness no it's not every single scientist will tell you that the line the the line is drawn when we enter consciousness and science is the investigation of material objects. Uh, assuming that we can um, uncover the mysteries of this world by the mechanisms of measurement that we currently have. Uh, did did we... you see where Lex Fried just said the word measurement? That's science in a nutshell. Science is a bunch of measurements, but consciousness can't be measured so that's where science says when my when my measuring tools fail me that's where i draw the line with science because science is just a bunch of measuring things uh, assuming that we can um, uncover the mysteries of this world by the mechanisms of measurement that we currently have uh, but we easily forget that we've made this assumption Mm -hmm. uh, so what do you think we missed out on by making that assumption that mm. it's fine to limit the scientific method to things we can measure and reason about and reproduce uh, that's fine uh, I think we have to recognize that sometimes we scientists also well, isn't it perfect isn't it perfect I just gave this whole spiel about science being a bunch of measurements and then they back up everything that I say you would think that I mean really you would think that I've listened to these videos that we do. I mean, I honestly haven't. Fine. So, uh, so we can already predict what she's going to say. She's going to say science reaches the limit with measuring tools, but that's not the end of science. I think we have to recognize that sometimes we scientists also believe in things that happened historically. Mm -hmm. You know, like I, I believe the Holocaust happened. I can't prove events from past history scientifically you prove them with historical evidence right with the impact they had on people with eyewitness testimony and and things y like that. yes but as i'm sure she discovered jesus christ proves jesus christ with his own teachings so okay. the the things jesus christ has to teach us about are far outside the comprehension of human beings it's not just some guy rambling. It's the truths of reality that no human being has ever been able to come up with. So when you go to the teachings of Jesus Christ, you're all of a sudden having all of your questions answered. And if not, you're given all the parables which will answer your question in a life journey. Good thinker recognizes that science is one of many ways to get knowledge. It's not the only way. And there, there's been some really bad blood. And I come, I come from exactly what she's talking about. I was raised on the freaking Discovery Channel. I was raised on the History Channel. I was very scientific, a very logical very reasonable and i still am i've just broken this barrier i had questions and it was only the teachings of jesus christ that could answer them it's not the only way and there's you know, been some the, the rest of the world 
I, I might as well my whole entire life been going around asking why is the sky blue? And all of humanity tells me to shut the fuck up. We don't ask questions around here. Jesus Christ was the only time when asking questions was a good thing. Jesus Christ is the only freedom I've experienced my entire life. Get knowledge. It's not the only way. And there, there's been some really bad philosophy and bad thinking recently, you can call it scientism, where people say science is the only way to get to truth. And it's not, it, it just isn't. There are other ways that work also, like knowledge of love with someone. You don't, you don't prove your love through science, right? Uh, so that's a that is an amazing epiphany that she came to love loves the highest of the law yeah how are you going to prove love with science it's something that you know it's something that you inherently know it's something that you knew before you were born on this planet earth thing you have a memory you, you have a memory of the perfect life. You have a memory of the kingdom of God. And love is one outlet to experience all of this. And you won't be able to break out the measuring tape and measure it. Your love through science, right? Uh, so history, philosophy, love, <laughs> a lot of other things in life. That, that's the kind of stuff that... Um, the masters, the uh, like I want to say, um, the Swami guys, you know, the Buddhism and Swami guys, they'll take a scientist like this, a scientist that hasn't made these epiphanies yet, and the scientist that really believes in their measuring tools, and the Buddhist, the Swami, will easily overcome the Western science. Because the, all the Swami has to do is bring up love. Then the scientist is absolutely stumped. Uh, show us that there's more ways to gain knowledge and truth, if you're willing to believe there is such a thing, and I, I believe there is. Uh, ha, then You don't need to believe in truth. The founding fathers of the United States built this entire... Um, civilization off of self-evident truth that comes from the gospels itself it's, i do i am a scientist however and in my science i do limit my science to you, you don't need to believe in truth it's something that we can all do together the founding fathers planned on this entire society people to not live in opinions for us all to come to the self-evident truth together and the truth will be identical for everyone. Puts us all on the same page together. And it has to be done within each human being. Nothing on the outside. There's no measuring tape. It has to be done from within the human being so that we all come to the identical self-evident truth together. That's called living properly. That's called a functioning society that the scientific method can can do. But I recognize that it's myopic to say that that's all there is. Right, there's just like- You, you know, know what would be the greatest revolution, the biggest revolutionary thing that could happen for science? If they started harping on this self-evident truth thing and show that that's how human beings are supposed to live and that builds a, pro a proper society for us all to live in. Not a bunch of people that live in Lucifer's opinion of everything, a whole society where all the people can come to self-evident truth. There's all the why questions and really we, we know. Do you, do you know how you're wrong? Well, because we'll all come to the identical truth together. We're being honest with ourselves. The percent of what we really know is, is uh, basically zero. Really. When you have these world oh. revolutions, it requires all of us. Oh, we get the ad. No, not going to. Relative to the full <laughs> mystery of the <laughs> measure theory, a set of measure zero. If I have a finite amount of knowledge, which I do. Uh, so you said that you believe in truth. Uh, so let me ask that. Old I, I think this woman is really advanced. I think that this this woman has beaten the ego. And 
I think it's absolutely amazing. You said that you believe in truth. Uh, She's ready. This woman is, Lex isn't ready. Lex is a stupid idiot where I wish, Le I want to give Lex so much of the benefit of the doubt, but just the way that Lex goes, so you believe in truth, Lex is an idiot. Lex is a dumb fuck that lives in opinion. He lives in the Luciferian reality where he believes all of life is his random opinion. So it, Lex, you know, Lex who has no emotion at all, Lex who's a robot, or Lex who's just a nothing, um, the only time he gets emotion is if somebody uttered the word truth. Look how Lex gets all condescending. It's hard to pick up with Lex because he's a robot that does nothing. The only time, look at Lex, the only time he ever showed emotion ever is when he thinks he's gonna ridicule somebody because they said truth. Which I do. Uh, so you said that you believe in truth. Uh, so let me ask look, that. Look at, look, look at Lex laugh. What? Why is Lex laughing? Why is Lex saying it like, so, <laughs> so, um, so you believe in truth there, don't you, stupid person? Why, why is Lex treating her like she's a stupid person? So you said that you believe in truth. Uh, so let me ask that old question. Uh, what, yeah, what you, uh, you, you guys probably think that's normal banter right there. That shit would enrage me. You know, a lot of people can't figure out what enrages me. Well, I mean, come on, guys. She said the word truth and Lex went into humiliation mode. Finite amount of knowledge, which I do. Uh, so you said that you believe in truth. Uh, so let me ask that old question. Uh, what, do, what do you guys understand how fucked up that actually is? Truth's a real thing. Truth is something that we should all come to. The Constitution of the United States is founded on self-evident truth. Why would Lex say, so? it's like a, a, a narrative has been established. Somehow ne Lex believes that truth doesn't exist and it's just a narrative that he has. So by her saying the word truth, it, it's the same as communism as repeating the lie until they believe it. So Lex has been told this lie over and over and over again that truth doesn't exist when it clearly does. So Lex has a really weird straw man thing to say of, oh, <laughs> so you think truth is something, you believe in, no, Lex, truth isn't something to believe in. It's something real to be experienced finite amount of knowledge which i do i mean if, uh, if you can if you can see that i hate lex you would be right this dumb shit numb skull that his whole life is a lie lex is the biggest liar to himself then when truth comes up lex wants to humiliate you over that there's nothing to humiliate anybody over lex you're just a stupid person is what's going on here a set of measure zero if I have a finite amount of knowledge, which I do. Uh, so you said that you believe in truth. Uh, so let me ask that old question. Uh, what, what do you think this thing is all about? What's the life on Earth? Life, the universe, and everything. Look, look si since, since, she, oh, this is the plot thickens. Since she, she said truth, since the word truth was said, now Lex wants to claim that she's the miracle man. Oh, you said truth. So that must mean you know everything. No, Lex. No, no, you're just really fucking dumb, Lex. So you better not say the word truth in front of Lex because then he'll say you're all knowing. Boy, that's kind of bigger than... Um, you know the the great king argument of where people want to go oh you're the you're a know-it-all you're the great fucking king well yeah lex isn't that what you're doing oh you said the word word truth it must mean you're all knowing you're a know-it-all what do you think this thing is all about oh i fucking hate people oh look how look how maniacal manipulative this lex is life on earth 
life, the universe, and everything. I, I can't. Think. What's I the can't meaning? quote Douglas Adams. Yeah. Forty two. I, I feel like I, I feel like nobody should have a conversation with somebody that's come to these epiphanies like this woman. Lex should go through me before he has a conversation with this woman. Lex needs to be, um, yeah, Lex needs to be beaten like a the dumb dog that he is. So before he tries to ridicule somebody that's come to these epiphanies, try to do it to me first. You go through me first before you talk to this woman. My favorite number. Try, oh, do, try to do all these things to me, Lex. Try to laugh when I say the word truth. Try to call me a know-it-all. Try to call me all of a sudden all-knowing since I can come to the self-evident truths of things. Oh, Lex, you will not do well. You will not do well against me. My street address, my husband and I oh, wow. guessed the exact same number for our house. We, we, we got to pick it. Okay. <laughs> and there's a reason we picked 42. Yeah. So is it just 42 or is there... Do you have other words that you can put around it? Well, I think there's a grand adventure, and I think this life is a part of it. I think there's a lot more to it than... She, she's figured it out, guys. Life's a grand adventure. So what you do is you let the teachings of Jesus Christ be your guide so that you're constantly growing. You're constantly learning. You don't live in Groundhog's Day. You have direction in life with the teachings of Jesus Christ. Without that, life is just stale, stagnant, depressing, and it's a nothing. I and the heart and the mind and the soul here, I think we, we see but through a glass dimly in this life. We see only a part of all there is to know. Ooh, it's, it's, it sounds like she's also listened to some Donald Hoffman. If people haven't read the, the Bible... She, they... She's talking in a way of where she understands all of life is hidden from us. And the, th the objects that you see in life, it, it's back to the um, No New Tale to Tell song. Uh, simple as a flower, now that's a complicated thing. Good if they consider themselves educated. And you could read proverbs and find tremendous wisdom in there that cannot be scientifically proven but when you read it there's something in you like like a musician knows when the instrument yep up. there's this inherent knowing every human being has this inherent knowing of the kingdom of god before you were born on planet earth and she's accessing that true knowing right and it's beautiful there's something in you that comes alive and knows that there's a truth there that it's like your strings are being plucked by the master instead of by me <laughs> right playing God, I... god's working through her she's using the compass of god she has set her ego aside she's learned what her false intuition is she's learned that her gut instincts is the false intuition and she's letting the true come through her she's letting god work through her she's knowing the difference between wrong and right not the ego's version of wrong and right like it but probably when you play it sounds spectacular right and when you when you encounter those truths there's something in you that sings and knows that there is more. That's the glory. Oh, I hate to stop it. She's talking about the most beautiful thing that could ever be. When you come to these truths, when you listen to these gospels, they, they do something to you. There's a remembering of the kingdom of God and the experience of the kingdom of God. And you get hungry for that. You get hungry for the truth. You get hungry to be liberated from who planet earth has turned you into and remembering who you really are spectacular right and when you when you encounter those truths there's something in you that sings and knows that there is more than what i can prove you know i even have our next video ready here with the gospel of philip therein dwells in the eternal realm there's one name that isn't uttered in the world, the name which the Father gave to the Son. It's exalted over everything. The, 
the that name will never be uttered because it's what she's talking about. It's the father. It's not a name like we call each other names. It's not a name like it's what she's talking about. Name because the son wouldn't have become father unless he had taken the name of the father. Those who have this name know it, but they don't say it. And those who don't have it don't know it. Truth brought names into the world for us because it's impossible for us to learn it without these names. There's only one truth. There's only one truth. But it's many things. But, but it's many things for us to teach this one thing in love through many things. Us. To teach this one thing in love through many things. The rulers wanted to deceive humanity because the rulers saw that they, humanity, had a kinship with those who are truly good. They took the name of those. The remembering. Those who are truly good, you have a remembering, you remember this kingdom of God, and the truths unite you with the remembering, which was all planned to be taken away from us with this backwards, upside down world that we live in, which was purposely made upside down and backwards so that we can't remember good and gave it to those that aren't good to deceive them humanity by the names and bind them to those that aren't good and then what a favor they do for them they take them from those that aren't good and place them among those that are good they knew what they were doing because they wanted to take those who were free and place them in slavery forever or program is she's waking up from the slavery guys the the slavery is real the upside down backwards world we live in is a real thing the remembering of the kingdom of god is a real thing computer to do don't get me wrong the math is gorgeous the computer programming can be brilliant it's inspiring right we want to do more uh none of this squashes my desire to do science or to get knowledge through science i i'm not i'm not dissing the science at all i grow even more and yeah it, it shouldn't make you hate anything it should make you love everything and pursue everything even more and be even more inspired to do it of what the science can do because I'm she, more... she's learned that it's not a set of rules guys it's a set of freedom and you know who makes the rules our own egos do uh, of all there is we don't know our ego makes a rule and we believe that it's God doing that then Jesus Christ has to set us free from that then you know what we do we make another rule then we believe that it's God then Jesus Christ has to set us free from it once again. And really at the heart of science, you have to have a belief that there's truth, that there's something greater to be discovered. And some scientists may not want to use the faith word, but it's faith that drives us to do science. It's faith that there is truth, that there's something to know that we don't know, that it's worth yeah, knowing. Yeah, she's putting it all together, guys, as in it's one thing. It's not a bunch of separate things. There's one truth, one humanity, one love. That it's worth working hard and that there is meaning, that there is such a thing as meaning, which, by the way, science can't prove either. Uh, we have to kind of start with some assumptions that there's things like truth and meaning. And these are really questions philosophers uh, own, right? This is their Exactly, space. yes, philosophers, and she's breaking down the walls where science says we draw the line when it gets to consciousness philosophers and theologians at some level so these are things science uh, you know if we if, when people claim that science will tell you all truth that's there's a name for that it's it's its own kind of faith it's scientism and it's very myopic. This first video is really just exposing a hole within scientism. Now, in the second clip that we're about to watch, she's going to begin to explain what that hole was filled with and why and how a lot of her preconceived notions about... Oh, God... we must be talking about that episode of Sunny in Philadelphia 
with Dennis and his God hole. And he's trying to figure out what I have a hole. There's a hole in my soul. And what do I fill it with? I call it my God hole, but I don't know how to fill it with God. It's supposed that hole in my soul is supposed to be filled with God. How do we fill it with God? What the Bible is about began to change as she actually went about a good faith pursuit of truth. And, and I mean, I'm sitting here as the teacher of the mystery school. Man, I grew up as a death metal kid. I was the exact opposite of all of this. To answering those huge... While, while all, of, all of this stuff was encrypted in all of my death metal music, all death metal music, all Metallica songs, and all, all the shit that we grew up to as Gen X, all written out of the Bible, all biblical. I questions. With that being said, let's dive in. Uh, my views at the time were that uh, Christians, and actually all religions, I was pretty antagonistic toward... Uh, were people who really didn't know their science or didn't, uh, or maybe they needed a crutch or something. I really didn't think they were that smart. Then I. Are you paying too much oh, for your man. favorite brands? Uh, the Reverb Outlet is your new home for big savings on. Then I started to realize. I love it what, what she's saying. She, she used to think um, religious people are stupid people, and she'd be right. For, the, for most religious people, they don't investigate, they don't learn, they don't live their lives trying to figure out what the parables of Jesus Christ are. They just believe in Jesus Christ and they want more people on their team. Many of such people were super smart uh, and they challenged me to read the best-selling book of all time, uh, which is probably still the Bible, and the Hebrew and Old Testament and uh, Christian New Testament. And I, uh, as I was reading that, and, and I, she and she was absolutely horrified when she read the Old Testament. Then, when she got to the New Testament, all of a sudden, it made sense. Uh, against my desires, I started to change my mind about some things, and then I thought, "Oh gosh, okay, if this book is influencing me to change my mind toward Christianity or toward belief in God, maybe I should study other world religions." So I started to do that. And as I uh, started learning more and more about different world religions, uh, I meeting um, people from those religions and going to temples. Very, very smart. She just she didn't go. Well, since I live in a Christian country, that means that I need to be Christian. No, that's what stupid people do. They just go, oh, since I'm in a Christian society, it means that I'm. Christian, yeah, that's what we all did when we were young, because we were just told that we were Christians. Yeah, you need to broaden out and check out the whole world to see. Buried in every single religion is Jesus Christ. And others. Uh, I started to realize uh, that not only did I have a lot to learn, but I was on a journey that was starting to make me not only believe in God even more, uh, but as I got dragged off to some Christian churches, which I resisted in the beginning, uh, and found some where I could ask questions, very important. Uh, I started to realize that the religion was not at all what I thought it was, and that there were some really interesting and very attractive elements uh, that were very uh, historically verified also, uh, not at all what I expected. And as I learned about that, I uh, changed my viewpoint gradually from an atheist to an agnostic to a theist to somebody who actually believed that uh, the historical Jesus and the New Testaments, what's written about him was true. Uh, it sounds a little wacky to those who may not come from that. Oh, it, ta it takes such a different understanding. It takes it. I don't know how it could ever be explained. I, I don't know how you would explain it to a scientist or somebody they that doesn't get it they would have to come to it themselves understanding how a gospel is written how how, how where did it come from it was not where anything. where did it come from and what makes it authentic process but as i did that and then i was challenged it's something that's beyond i don't know how to explain it it's a truth but I have no idea how to explain if we switch over to the Gospel of Philip, it's exactly accurate. It's, there's no way to explain these things. 
you not only you, you have to come to it yourself believe this but to put it to practice that's where things started to really make a difference in my life and actually the real reason i'm here right now spending time talking about something like this as opposed to just my research is because it has made a huge difference in my life and it i am um, part of the christian faith is that there's a gift for everybody in the world whether you're raised Christian or Hindu or Muslim or Buddhist or atheist or uh, any of a long list you, of... When you, when you become a friend of Jesus Christ, I mean, it's so beautiful what she's saying. It transcends every single language. It transcends everything. It's above everyone and everything as a guide to our way of life other than, you know, the Jewish duality it's a guide to my whole way of life and jesus christ takes away that jewish law of duality and replaces it with the heart of the law backgrounds there's a, a gift for everybody there and um, when i accepted that gift uh, it made a huge difference in my life uh, for the better big improvement so i didn't it realize it was... seems like she's figured out wait a minute guys there is a guide to life. Wait a minute. There is a place where we can get our questions answered. Wait a minute. There is a proper way to build society itself. Wait a minute. There is a, a guide for parents to educate their children. Improving at the time. Uh, There's itself. only one. It's the door of Jesus Christ. It's the only way. We've tried this, guys. We've tried humanity using its own opinions on things. Is it working out? Is this backwards, fucked up, upside down world all ruled by human beings' opinions? It doesn't work. It doesn't work. And it looks like she figured out, wait a minute, there is a rhyme and a reason to it. Wait a minute, there is a way. In the beginning, God created uh, the heavens and the earth. Uh, and um, today it is my source of strength, uh, an amazing source of peace and joy and uh, wisdom. Now, you know that I love that she ends this with the word wisdom and this idea that Christ is a gift, this gift. There's, that there's no idea. There's not an idea. L listen to him. He said that there's an idea. No, it's a real thing in the real world, a truth. The gift of Jesus Christ is all giving. It gives everything. It's not, there's not an idea of it. There's the reality of it. Joy and uh, wisdom. Now, you know that I love that she ends this with the word wisdom and this idea that Christ is a gift, this gift that is available to all religions, this gift that is available to all nations. She's talking about Jesus himself, the gift that is given by God, from God, for humanity, that is the the ultimate gift. This reminds me very much of the movie The Matrix, where there's the red and the blue pill that are offered. And what's so interesting yeah, I know, about- I know the, the Jewish law of duality. The, the law gives me the right to judge everything against everything in one big hypocritical nightmare. It reminds you of The Matrix, it, it, it does as an analogy or a metaphor is that only after receiving uh oh red... uh oh he thinks that there's a he he doesn't understand that it's the du duality trap of the god of the jews oh no he really thinks that you take one pillar or another guys you you get this riddle right it's a it's a satanic joke of taking these two pills because they're duality they're both the same exact pill the truth was between the pills between the pillars is the door oh does the you know what movie is it like alice in wonderland these two pills these two pillars aren't allowed to look at each other one looks off to the left and one looks off to the right and it's a movie like Alice in Wonderland or something. I'm pretty sure it's Alice in Wonderland. Like she goes to ask these two doors which direction to go. And they, of course, give her confusing directions. The, the left um, pillar goes, well, I'm only allowed to look because they're not allowed to look at the glory of God. They're not allowed to look at the middle. So the left pillar looks off at the left 
and it'll give you directions going off in the left. The right looks at the right, and it'll give you directions to go off on the twisty, thorny path to the right. And it's a trick. It's a riddle where you weren't supplied the middle door. So you were only given these two pillars as a choice when it's between the hands, like if he wants to hold out his hands, he's doing the symbolism. Himself, Let's the watch gift him. that is given by God, from God, for humanity, that is the, the ultimate gift. This reminds me very- Right, look at the two pillars, his hands. Then he opens his hands. The movie The Matrix, where there's the red and the- Okay, guys, it's the microphone. Where the microphone is, is where the door belongs. You're not given that choice, it's a trick to say, do you want the red pill or do you want the blue pill? But I'm not going to tell you about the secret third option in between the pillars, the light between in, in the crack of the door. I'm not going to give you that option. You either you either take the blue pill or you take the red pill. No, I'm not going to take either either of those pills. And I'm going to be like Truman who escaped the game, the matrix, and I'm gonna go through the door instead. Blue pill that are offered. And what's so interesting about that as an analogy or a metaphor is that only after receiving the red pill does and, the transformation. And you, and you know what's amazing about this is if you asked any Christian, everybody already knows that the red pillar symbolizes Christianity. Isn't that odd? Everybody already knows the red pill symbolizes conservatives, which conservatives symbolize Christianity. And everybody knows that it's the red pill. And everybody knows that the Democratic side, because they symbolize themselves with blue. Blue pill that are offered. And what's so interesting about that so as an analogy. Of course, he said the red pill, it wouldn't matter. He's saying the red pill because every single person knows that the red pill is supposed to symbolize Christianity and the other one symbolizes atheist. And none of that was right. It was the duality game. You're all caught in the duality. You're all caught in the Jewish law that Jesus Christ is freeing us from. Or a metaphor is that only after receiving the red pill does the transformation of reality take place and is the person able to actually see what is real you have to actually take action no you you, you you don't take any of those pills and you go through the door of jesus christ or to fully see There's it some was a joke it was a big ass joke on you to give you two pills to take never give you the you see you have to discover it on your own so you're only given two options, but there's a secret third option that you have to, that's in the dark. Like hearing God's voice in the dark is discovering that you don't take either one of these pills. Very similar to this when it comes to God as well. In other words, if you choose the blue pill, you won't be able to actually see the code of reality itself. It's not a perfect metaphor, but there's Me some. Remember NC books? This was the whole entire thing with NC Books. He, his whole entire thing was, no, Christianity is the red pillar. No, Christianity is the red side. The, and then the atheists are the blue side. And then we try to recruit as many people as we can onto our red side. Thing to what she describes. The red side is a bunch of people that believe in Jesus Christ, but aren't a friend of Jesus Christ. It might as well, it's the same as the atheist side. At the end, where it's through living it out, it's through trusting in God, it's through holding God's hand, it's through actually taking the truths of God and working them into your life. Actually, this cause and effect that scripture talks about, if you seek me, then you will find me. If you knock, then the door will be open. There is this- Yeah, if you knock, the door will be open. What if we didn't know how to knock? What if we didn't know the secret option between the two pillars? where God is asking us to take action on what has been revealed about him and then 
through that relationship beginning and us trusting God one step at a time, we experience more and more relationship with him, more and more depth, more and more intimacy, just like with human relationships, just like... I, I, I disagree while I agree with you at the same time. Romantic relationships, the more time that you spend... I disagree because you're making God to be like a miracle man, like just like the miracle men that we look for and they let us down and you're going to set us up for failure. The more trust that you give, the deeper that the relationship grows and the more certainty that you have in the relationship that you have. Kind of a lot for one video, but with all this being said, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see I, you. Like I was going to say, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Much love to everyone. If you learn for real at the mystery school, please donate. I really, I could never tell you the gratitude I have for all of you that donate. Much love to you. I hope you have the greatest day every day.